The Bitcoin news just keeps on going. I'm sure we all have heard of the ETFs that launched the Bitcoin stuff and the big name behind them was BlackRock. Everyone obviously looking at BlackRock, seeing what they're doing. They're like one of the biggest, if not the biggest money managers on the planet. And uh, now Larry Fink has come out and said, basically, he loves Bitcoin. It's crazy to see this being the story of events that's happening because obviously Larry Fink was a huge hater of Bitcoin. He's for a long time saying it's like the worst thing in the world. He was on that train with a bunch of other people, but now seems to have changed his tune after what he says, doing a little bit of studying into Bitcoin. Skeptic? <laughs> yes! I, you know, I was a proud skeptic. Yes. <laughs> and I studied it, learned about it, and I came away saying, okay, you know, my opinion five years ago was wrong. Here's my opinion today. This is what I believe in today. I believe the opportunity today. I believe Bitcoin is legitimate. I'm not trying to say there's not bet misuses like everything else. I think this right here is a big moment for Larry Fink and for people in general, because it does seem to be most people who are Bitcoin critics or Bitcoin haters in the like years ago and before that eventually they kind of either start looking into it because it goes up in price and they say like, what is going on here? And they look into it and see, you know, maybe I was actually a little wrong. So Larry Fink admitting that he was wrong about Bitcoin. And honestly, because it's Larry Fink and there's so many people who are going to look at him uh, and respect what he says and basically just kind of copy him because of the, where BlackRock is, it's a huge moment because other people will be able to come forward and say, you know, they were wrong and they're, they think that Bitcoin has a place for stuff because before it was career risk, now it's acceptable. But it is a legitimate financial instrument that allows you to have maybe uncorrelated, non-correlated type of returns. I believe it is an instrument that you invest in when you're more frightened, though. It is an instrument when you believe that co countries are debasing their currency, de debasing their currency by excess deficits. So this part, I kind of don't agree with him on for a little bit, for, for at least part of it, because he says that Bitcoin is something that you invest in when you're frightened, when you're scared. And I don't think that that's too true. That could be a swing thing, like when overall markets are scared, they run to treasury bills usually or cash. So when you're talking about like extreme fear, all markets run to cash in extreme fear type of places. But uh, overall, people who are buying Bitcoin, holding Bitcoin, I don't think are looking at it as, oh, I'm terrified that the world's going to go <laughs> go down, right? That the world's going to be terrible and Bitcoin's the only way out. I think Bitcoin's more of a, you know, the world's going to be able to be better with a hard money and move forward and do things better in this system than, you know, what we're currently in. I think it's maybe a way to, you know, invest in the future of stuff and the future being better than what it could be right now, not being scared of stuff. But the way he phrases it, maybe, you know, scared of debasement. If you're talking about like that, then yeah, obviously that's right. You know, fiat will be going down forever because it's just how it's designed. Uh, so if it's fear in that sense, sure. If it's fear in the sense like the world's ending, I don't think so. And some countries are. I believe we have um, countries where you're frightened of your everyday existence and you have an opportunity to invest in, in a, a something that is outside your country's uh, you know, control, then you can have more financial control. And so I'm a, a major believer that there is a role for Bitcoin in, in portfolios. I believe you're going to see that as, an, as a, one of the asset classes that we all look at. I look at it as digital gold, as I said before, and I do believe there's a, a, there's a, there's a real need for everyone to look at it as, as one alternative to, I would say, the optimism that I have in the world. If you want to hedge hope, Bitcoin is not a, an instrument for hope, unless you're hopeful you're going to make a lot of money on it. <laughs> but it, I, I look at it as a vehicle in which you're expressing your, your financial acumen in something that you're more frightened of the world, you're more frightened of your existence. So still from all this, still disagree, right, with the frightened thing. Already talked about that. Uh, I think it's, it's, you have like two options here, like Larry Fink saying Bitcoin's for the frightened and then Michael Saylor's Bitcoin is hope, right? <laughs> the crazy part about Bitcoin 
is why it's so bulletproof is it's an idea overall like it's an idea so larry fink what he's saying can be true and then michael saylor the opposite side what he's saying can also be true to those people right so because it's an idea is what makes bitcoin so bulletproof that it can't just be taken down because it can literally mean two things to both people for michael saylor it's hope for larry fink it's fear but and they can both be right in in some sort of way and it still actually helped them so i think that's a crazy part about bitcoin but also he's obviously done maybe a little bit of research looking into stuff because he brings up digital gold i think it's this it's got a place in portfolios and whether or not you like larry fink or blackrock it is big coming from him because of his influence over markets and money and stuff where this is breaking down the barrier before it was not acceptable to talk about bitcoin and to say i think bitcoin's a good thing i think bitcoin can be in portfolios that was complete career risk and you could lose your job and lose everything for doing this but now when these guys are breaking down that wall and making it acceptable to talk about at least it opens the conversation it makes things so that you can actually talk about it so that ideas can flow and you don't have to worry that you are at some sort of career risk because you mentioned the word Bitcoin. And I believe there's a great industrial use for it. And I, and I think a lot of people are missing that. I couldn't agree more. I changed my mind about it when you did. <laughs> you admit my thinking. It was like, uh-uh, you don't believe it. So I can't believe it. I want to thank Larry Fink for the message of optimism. Thank I think this is the funny part, too, with Jim Cramer, right? So he's Larry Fink's talking, says all this stuff. And I think Jim Cramer is the typical... I mean, like maybe boomer or institution where they're like, oh, does Larry Fink likes it? Oh, he, oh, I like it that it's a good thing. Oh, Larry doesn't, Larry says it's bad. It must be a bad thing. I don't like that thing. But I feel like that's how it's so many people react is because it's Larry Fink. Uh, I don't even know too many other people. Larry Fink has like a huge chokehold on like hovering over this industry and kind of being like, oh, if he says something, it's got to be true, right? So, this at least, I guess, breaks down the barrier. Jim Cramer saying that just kind of sums it all up. But um, honestly, obviously good for Bitcoin, right? Good for the price of Bitcoin, I guess. But uh, more or less good for more adoption, right? At least people who, institutions, companies, and probably older people who are going to look at this and say, Larry Fink saying that Bitcoin's got a place in portfolios, that it's something that you can use to hedge yourself, to... Uh, against debasement he says you could if you're fearful you can put into bitcoin right so he's opened that door and people will take that and actually start moving with it so people who originally would have never come to this space or ever even thought about it are now going to give it an idea or at least give it a look and maybe enter that door and put some sort of money or something into bitcoin to see what happens right so i think that this opens that door and ultimately whether or not you like larry fink or blackrock this situation is overall a good thing for Bitcoin. But let me know what you think. Is it terrible for Bitcoin that we've got these institutions talking in, that they've taken over, people say that, or is this actually a good thing and can actually spur more adoption? But that's gonna do it for this video. As always, don't forget to smash the button and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in my next video.